What's up, guys? War here. Welcome back to the channel. We are back with another build guide for season 28, and we're talking about the wizard and possibly one of the strongest builds in the game the Tau Rasha Meteor build. We are doing speeds today, but it's not too different from doing um, GR pushing. So let's go over everything that you're going to need for the build. So we got Tau Rasha's elements we're doing the full set piece we're doing five out of the six because we're combining it with Abdul's. but for the two piece set bonus damages with arcane cold fire and lightning will grant you immunity to that element and cause a meteor of the same damage type to fall from the sky this only occur occurs if the wizard has meteor on their action bar okay and the same one can't happen twice in a row so what this means is guys is that each different element arcane cold uh, lightning cold and fire anything like this that comes down we're going to be able to uh we need to change change our familiar to fire but uh all these elements will call down another uh meteor of that same element which is huge okay four set piece bonus is arcane cold fire and lightning attacks each increase all of your resistances because we're basically a tank and then attacking with meteor reduces your teleport by one second which is what we're going to do to get around the map our six set piece bonuses is, is attacks increase your damage by two thousand percent for eight seconds and all the elements attack each add one stack at four stacks each different element attack extends the duration by two seconds to a max of eight okay so we'll have our damage increased the, basically the entire time okay we paired it with the Abdul set which gives us reduced damage and increased damage against and from elites and then just in general which is awesome we paired this with the squirts necklace as always for double damage convention of elements for even more elemental damage because on every rotation we're going to get the bonus and then of course halo of karini to be a tank okay with our boots guys we got no first boast you definitely need this it's key to the build you increase the damage of meteor by 600 percent and then when your meteor hits three or few enemies it's increased even more then the grand visor this is the bread and butter of the build reduces the arcane power cost of meteor by 50 percent, so we're able to spam it even more and then gives it a big boost in damage okay our legendary gems we got is bane of the powerful so when we take out an elite pack we do more damage uh zaya stone of vengeance because we're going to be hitting people from all over the place and then bane of the trap for even more damage now into the cube we have the smoldering core so lesser enemies are now lured to my meteor impact areas and they deal 50 percent increased damage when they hit the same person stacks 10 times uh mempho of twilight meteor shower rune is now applied to all cast meteors dealing 400 percent increased damage that's why when we cast you see a bunch being cast all at the same time as opposed to just whatever the rune would be so very very good and then ring of royal grandeur to bring everything together now in our skills we have these set up a certain way guys so we can hit all the elements and be able to speed around the map as fast as possible so we have diamond skin prism this reduces the the cost of all of our meteor spamming uh while diamond skin's active so we have that on arcane we're not gonna be dealing damage with it but we have it on arcane now meteor comet okay if the pushing build uses star impact for damage but comment is so that way it instantly comes down okay when we're jumping around and just casting it's going to come down super fast so that's why we're running comment for cold then we have calamity uh teleport which gives us our arcane for movement speed we have storm armor power of the storm for lightning and reduces the arcane power cost of all our skills by three storm armor is always going to be up which will help trigger our halo of karani so we're just a tank then we have familiar spark flint so that way we gain 10 percent increased damage and we have the fire rune and then magic weapon deflection for increased damage and then we get a protective shield so we're even more tankier okay which is the shield you see around us right now into our passes we have audacity for 30 percent additional damage to enemies within 15 yards i like illusionist so that way we have a little bit more movement speed and then when we take more life our uh, teleport is reduced but if you guys feel too squishy and don't want to run illusionist you can run dominance you can also run arcane domino uh, or even run unstable anomaly so those are your three options if you don't want to run illusionist uh, galvanizing war which gives us another shield and then elemental exposure for even more damage because damaging them with all the elements will give us five percent increase more damage 
for my attacks for over five seconds, stacks four times. It's a, it's a bomb of a passive. Now, into our stat priorities, guys. A few of them are gonna be fickle, but I'm gonna go over them briefly. So in our helmet, we want intelligence, crit chance, meteor damage. In our shoulders, this is where things get tricky. We're gonna want all resist, intelligence, cooldown, and resource cost reduction. So vitality doesn't need to be in there. In our chest, we want int, vit, attack speed, armor. In our gloves, we want uh, intelligence, crit, crit, resource cost reduction, but I really enjoy the um, uh, area damage because we're just gonna be spamming, so we're not gonna be spending too much resource, so I think the area damage is fine. Uh, we already went over chest, so in our bracers, we want fire skills, intelligence, vit, crit chance, but because you are running comment, you can change that to cold. Uh, that's just set for when we're running um, the fire rune. Belt, you want intelligence, vit, all resist armor. Pants, you want intelligence, vit, armor. Boots, you want intelligence, vit, armor, meteor damage. In our weapon, you want fire damage, damage, percent, intelligence, and then area damage. In our rings, you're gonna want attack speed, crit, crit. And then this one, you want attack speed, crit, crit, not intelligence. So those are your stat priorities, guys. Now, I'm gonna go over how to play the build because we are gonna do a GR90. So basically, you're gonna get in there, you're gonna keep these up at all times. We're gonna dash around, and then we're just gonna drop Meteor uh, Comet nonstop. All four of these should be up at all times, guys. Pretty simple to build. You should only be pressing these two after, and then you just spam those. So let's do it. Get all of our stuff up. And then you don't want to stay and just wait. You want to just dash around as much or teleport as much as you can. You, oh my god, I'm so bad at this game at reading maps. I'm trying to look at my skills here. Now you can hold this if you want and do it that way. Or you can you can click it. Totally up to you. It's totally your preference, guys. But the build is just insane. It does so much damage. It's not clunky to play whatsoever. The only thing about this is that it's just slow. Now, if you wanted to move around a little bit more and not have the um, kind of delay here, you could drop the smoldering core inside of your cube and run Aether Walker. So that way you can teleport around non-stop. That is totally up to you. That is your call. You do lose a little bit of damage, but that's okay. It isn't going to hurt you in the long run when you're just doing GR90s. But um, if you definitely want to do that, you can. I've ran both guys, and it, it's just kind of a preference. I like having a little bit more speed than what I have now, so I would probably switch to it. But I wanted to give you the smoldering core just because the damage that it has is very important. And now, hey, look, now we got a speed pylon, which is cool. But the build is very flavorful, guys. It's very pleasing to the eye to be able to just destroy everything. And you're just you're just dropping meteors, man. I mean, this build has been insane since they released it, even without the power that it has. Or even back, you know, in the last season, there wasn't even really that many powers that it could use except for the one that they nerfed. But the build is so good. We got our speed buff. See, I don't even have to look at them. I just, I just drop meteors and then move along to the next group. Because the meteors should kill them as you're bringing them down. No problem. Just hits everything. On single target damage, guys, this is an absolute beast. You can just spam it and they just instantly die. So this is a sub three minute for sure. Two minutes on a good day um, if you got the extra speed buff. But this build absolutely destroys. And this is the speedier version. So when you're pushing and changing a few of the skills around, you just decimate GR150s. No problem, guys. So look at that, 218, very, very fast. I really enjoy it. I think I would swap out the Smoldering Core um, just because you're gonna deal so much damage anyway in the speeds that having Aether Walker in here would probably be fine. 
So that is the build for Talrash's Meteor. This is one of my favorite builds. I'm going to be playing Wizard this season because the Hydras is just awesome. So make sure to check out that video. Uh, hit the like button if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe here if you guys are new to the channel. And as always, stay gaming, guys. I'll catch you in season 28. And I'm out. Peace.